Um, in the first place, I'm a military man who serves in the Ghana Air Force. But beside that, I'm an athlete too, to the national level. I try doing my best for the nation, but due to lack of support, I'm not getting to where I want to be. And I'm still fighting hard to see if I can get to the top. In fact, I started uh, my athletics career when I, I got to the senior high school. That was uh, in Salaga at the north. I never knew I could run until when I was going to secondary school, my father observed my way of doing things, and he was also an athlete. And in fact, they were running for fans, not like today. And he thought it was that if I should run, it will help me in future. So he advised me that if I get to the school and they are doing athletics, I should try, and he will see where my talent will fall. So. When I got to the school, Mr. Baba, who happened to be our PE master, wanted to shake the phone once and add to the school team. So he asked me whether I can do the cross country if he look at my structure. So I asked him how it's organized. And when he just described it to me, I said, I can do it. And my first try, I won the race. And they sent us to a distance from the school. The first person to get to the school, I was the first person to get to the school. When the champions were not thinking of me or somebody beating them at that level. So after that, the following day, they asked me whether I can partake in the 5,000. I said yes. That one too, I tried and then they beat me to third position. So with the third and then the first in the cross country, I went home to show the certificate to my old man and he was very happy. And he being happy that I've inherited or I've taken his full step, that one alone motivated me to push in more my interest because my father was very happy and when he saw my action picture, he was showing it to other family members. Yes, this is my boy. This is the guy. This is the guy I think he will take my footsteps. So when he was seeing it, I was very excited. So I decided to put all my strength or to put my interest in, into long distance run. I tried a short distance and I was not able to make it. So I decided to put my effort on the long distance. And by so doing, the following year, I qualified to the zonas level. Then I continued to Tamale, where we competed for Super Zonas, to select people to represent the Northern team. We camped in Damango. From Damango, then we continued to Sunyani for the regionals. That was 2005. I got to the regional level and excelled there too. And that was where the military saw me having this talent and they said, no, we need you in the military. You will be a strong man in the military. In fact, when they approached me, I said, no, I don't want to be a military man. But then I was having a chance from one uh, Mr. Mr. Abu from Bimila, who do recruit runners to US. I was having a chance with him, thinking that he, he also promised me sending me after my education, after my secondary school education. So my hope was on him that he would come back for me. But being a, a poor man from the village, I was doubting, what about if I leave this military thing and then this man to fail me, what will happen? So I came back, I came to Accra here, I was called by uh, the late Yanua, uh, W.O. Ejekum. He, uh, 
he called me to Accra and told me that whatever the military want me to buy to go to the training school, he will buy them for me. When I told him that uh, my way of life, even if they ask me to buy something, I cannot buy. That was the prospectus, the military prospectus. And he said, no, he can buy them for me. And I came and he made me know that when you are into the military, the sector that you belong to, if you do well, you will be promoted. Your promotion will come from your hard work. So before I even go to the training school, I was psyched up that all that I'm going to do in the military is to work hard at the sector that I belong to. So I got to the school and they gave me a trade. That after I pass out being a student man, I'll be going for the physical training instruction course. So at the school there, my aim was to break the training record. So I was training hard. And God being so great, I broke the run for your life with a different, two, a different six minutes as my previous seniors did. Their record, I broke it different six minutes. From there, my first uh, Armed Forces Games, that was 2008. I came and broke the record and even broke the national record. But it was rather unfortunate that the nation did not recognize that record. By then, the Titan tracks at Elwak was still new. I ran with uh, Solomon Anyadina, who was the current champion, and I did 13.35 seconds in Elwak, that is in the, uh, the 5,000 meters race. That one alone was, already I was at the top, because when you get to the top guys in the world, that's the timing they do. 13 low, 13 high, and I could have been there if I should get support from that place. So the military also motivated me by sending me on a mission to Lebanon. And I sense what the man told me, that when you are in the military, your hard work will always push you forward. So I decided to put all my strength in whatever I do. So that 2008 record that I said, from there I went to Lebanon and came back 2009 and we had a national cross country in Sunyani. I did my best too. And from there I was recognized in the nation. So 2010 I partake in my first Accra Milo Marathon, which I placed second beaten by God in Adipo. Then I train hard and I'm that type. If you beat me this year with a particular time, the next time we are meeting, don't be expecting that time. I'll make sure I work hard and harder to bring down my timing or to improve upon the performance that I did the last time. So when I got in Adipo beat me, in that race, we did two hours, two, two hours, 28 minutes in the 42.2 kilometers. The following year, I trained harder and was beaten by Akuka Williams with different time, two hours, 26. Management in athletics is very expensive. You need to be exposed to the outside world, to different weather conditions and so many things you need to be exposed or you need somebody to pay attention to you medically, your kit for training, uh, even your checkup. It should be something that will push you, your performance or you get good coaching. Right now I speak, I take my, uh, my workout from Tanzania. I take it from this uh, coach. But one thing I realized about Ghanaians is that they don't want to prepare somebody to come and do something for the nation. But they want you to be ready. Then they come in to support you. I personally believe I did two hours, 80 minutes. But later on, the timing I saw on net was in two hours, 80 minutes. Because 
I was running and I timed myself and I stopped the time when I even forgot and I later on stopped the time to hours 19. But later on, the timing that was put on net was different thing. And as I speak now, when you go to the net, some put two hours 19, others put two hours 20. And as I was saying earlier on, I don't know whether the nation is not interested in long distance. Supposing they are interested in long distance, like by now, they should have been chasing me to make me better. This year, the Olympics trial uh, uh, qualifying time was 2 hours 19. So even if I should do 2 hours 20, why don't you push me and see if I can make the timing? You can enter me into races that I can go and compete and make good timing or to, to re, uh, let's say, to confirm the timing that I did. It would have been better, but it's like nobody is minding you and when you go to places for help, they always tell you go and come and that is all. So this year I was very happy that I had a call that Puma was to kit me uh, with my training kit. I was very happy. Even my racer, if you see how torn it is, because it's very expensive to buy a racer, it's not easy. And when you buy them, because we are into long distance, if you race one, two, three with it, it's out. If you are continuing with it again, it will either end up by giving you injury or it will, you just destroy it during race. In fact, uh, bef before this year, this year being an Olympics year, my main focus was to qualify for the Olympics, which I believe I did, but I don't know where the problem was coming from. Because of that, if you observe the race that I raced this year, it was all different. That was why I have to inform my uncle when I had the chance to go outside for training. So if you, you watch the clip, you can see that from the onset, I ran professionally. Unlike previous days, the way I've been running, this year my running was different. So because of that, I was just, my focus was to qualify for the Olympics Games. And I'm still, even though I've not been added to the Olympics team, or I'm not part of it. I've not given up yet. I still have the hope that maybe if not this, uh, if not the coming Diamond Leagues for me to participate, or the coming Commonwealth Games I'll be part, then next Olympics, then I should see myself there performing greatly. I went to Tanzania and spent three months there training purposely to qualify for the Olympics game. And the coaches there saw it in me and even the coach was saying he, he can recommend for them to, to request for a slot from the, what's the name? From the world, uh, from the world marathon, marathon race, so that I can go and partake in it. And the guy that I was training with he went there and he was part of the top 10 and he did good timing over there. And some people don't understand uh, long distance. Long distance series is unpredictable. When you go for the race, depending on the terrain, 
or how prepared you are. If you don't have good management, for them to know where you are going, how the place will look like, and you go to a place of equal altitude or equal weather condition, and you get there, you may not get the performance. You may not get the target that you want. Uh, example is the world record holder. He could not finish the race in the world, uh, what is the name? Uh, marathon. Because of the weather. His complaint was that the weather was too hot for him. And he holds the world record in marathon, which was two hours, two minutes. Such a person ran and stopped. I don't think if you are a Ghanaian, you go to do this, people will be happy with you. But simply because some of them do understand how athletics is. So I, my aim is to get to the top. My aim is to get to the top. One day also run and hold the Ghana flag high. Then somebody will see and say, yes, this is a Ghana. And when I was in Germany, during the race, the commentary that they passed made me feel that they've never seen a day long distance Ghana, a, 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 an athlete being a long distance runner from Ghana because the way they were passing the commentary. They said this was their first time of seeing a Ghanaian long distance runner. All that they know about us is football and sprint. We have the long distance runners. We have them. And if we focus on them or we get good management, other countries that we always meet. Most of the athletes, some are police. Ethiopians, I met most of them. Some are police, others are soldiers. Normally, in a country, when they see, a, 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 let's say, a sportsman, they think he's fit to do the security jobs, which always de deal with fitness. So most of the athletes you see on top there, if they want to tell you or if you want to know much about them, you will discover that they are all coming from either the military, the police, or uh, fire service. Those Most of my friends that I've been meeting outside are also uniformed personnel. So me being a uniformed personnel and an athlete is not surprising. So in fact, if as you get the chance, I just want to make a history. I want to make a history. Just recently, during the Armed Forces Games, around 14 minutes in 5,000. You can ask the sports council, when was the last time somebody ran 14 minutes in Ghana here, in 5,000? And even when you watch the Tata on which I ran, you can see potholes. At times, you step on the concrete. So nobody should tell you if Somebody should run 14 on this data. Somewhere else he will run 13. That's why I'm saying I don't know how serious Ghanaians are taking long distance. If they are taking it serious, maybe I'm just an athlete. You are, uh, that is your profession. You are a coach or you are into sports management. And you've seen that I have some talent. Even if I'm discouraging myself, you should encourage me. Even if you see that I'm serious, or, or no, even if you see that I have the talent and I'm not serious, you should be the best person to do it, to encourage me to be serious. Let me understand what I'm doing, even if I don't understand it. How much more I understand, and yet <laughs> you are not getting any support, or nobody is pushing you into it. Look at this canvas, this particular canvas. This is Risa, and that is 400 Ghana CDs. If this is 400 Ghana CDs, and I wear this for, let's say, two, three weeks, and it's torn, how do I buy another one? Another 400 Ghana CDs. So let's say, within three months, I've used this one, times three, and it's gone. What I will use for the competition is not there. At the end, what I will even take? My diet, uh, medically, my multivite, things that will help me perform. Like, uh, let's say when you, you go for training in the morning, when you come back, you need to eat well to 
recover for evening training. Uh, all these things, when you sum it up till the time that you go and compete, what you take in Ghana here, it doesn't even match half of it. This year's race, I had uh, 1,500 Ghana cities. No, 15,000 Ghana cities. That is 150 million old currency. How much did I spend when I went to Tanzania? $3,100. So, let's see, just subtract that one alone. $3,100 from uh, 15,000 Ghana cities. How much is left? So, you see that I was running at loss in order to qualify for this Olympics. I was pushing myself. I train and, in fact, some of my family members will see me and think I'm a sickler. But with my uncle, I could remember uh, during the Millennium uh, Marathon, I could not perform and he looked at me and said it was overtraining. That when he looked at me, that it's like I was overtraining. When we also relax, we like it. But we choose to come up to also help the nation in a different direction. Supposing I go for the Olympics and I'm able to win a gold medal. It's a glory to the country. And I, I was pushing harder because I don't think of what somebody will give me before I'll perform because I'll be the first person before the nation. They will ask, ah, who is that? They mention my name, Kasim, before where he's coming from. And whenever I'm running and I put this in my mind, it, gives, it boosts me to push myself more, thinking that one day, if I should get the support, I will get to the top. And when we come to the military, they are ever ready to release me whenever a letter comes for me to be released because they know me to be a national asset. So in case of any competition, someone is entering me outside. Don't as a state, just you enter and, get, and make sure you get to the, get me a letter to get to the military to know my whereabouts. They are ever ready to release me, to go wherever they feel, uh, I feel like going to, to raise the uh, country's image. And military, that's already our motto. We are there to protect the country and more to the point, raise the image of the country. So there's no any cause of alarm in terms of entering me outside games or trying to push me forward. Okay, I'll take this opportunity to say uh, big thanks to, the, uh, to Almighty Allah for giving me the talent that I'm a long distance runner. In fact, it's not everybody that have this talent. And it's not everybody that can even run for a kilometer. So it's a blessing to all my fans and then my family members. Whosoever is listening to me, I thank the person. And may they keep on supporting me and I will never let them down. And also a thank you to Ant Hill Multimedia Limited for making this uh, interview successful. I'm only coming to do what I've done in the training. Either I will be the winner or someone else. The finishing line will judge. <laughs>
Where, what, 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 So in 2011, then this one, 2013, a gold medal. Then this one, 2015, another gold medal. And this one here was a medal I had from the International Finnish Half Marathon. And this one here, also international maybe in uh, uh, in Dar es Salaam. That was in Tanzania. And this one here is the National Unity Games. This was 5,000 meters race medal in 2011. This one here was. Ngorongoro International Game Race, also in Tanzania. And this one here is Bagamoyo Historica Half Marathon, 21 kilometers, also in Dar es Salaam. And this was 
a medal I had for my first cross country race in Europe, dance in uh, Germany. It was 10.3 kilometers race. And this is also a mountain race, a race in all mountains in Ghana. And in front of me are also some of the trophies that I have won. This was 2013 Accra Milo Marathon Trophy. And this one here is 2015 Accra Milo Marathon again. And this one here was the best postman award for the year 2015. And now, boss. I'm crying out, I want to live for you alone. You have captured my.